So I thought I'd resurrect my electrical rambles in these difficult times. I was so pleased with myself. I've downloaded the Skype app. I've contacted my first guest for these uh, electrical rambles at a distance. I contacted Ian Clark from North Lindsay College up in Scunthorpe, and he said, Gaz, I'd love to do an electrical ramble with you. Winner, winner. However, I managed to lose the first part of the footage somehow, and I don't know how I did that. These electrical rambles give me memories to look back on when I've finished my electrical career of all the people that I managed to meet along the way and have influenced and inspired me on my journey. So we're going to cut to the footage halfway through with me talking to Ian Clark. We'll pick it up from there from a technical issue. We were we were looking there at the eFix visit when we came up to you in, in Scunthorpe at North yeah. Jersey. Okay, and you were the first. So we we obviously practiced on you to a certain degree. We had a nice relationship with you. We thought if we come and fell, fell over when we got there, then it wouldn't be uh, too much of an issue. So how did you find the visit? The visit was excellent. It was a fantastic day. Um, if, if you recall, we sent you a video. You did. Um, my students had, had found the GSH channel and, and Joe Robinson channel, and we'd been using it. Uh, one of my students, Joe, said, I want to be in one of them rambles. So we, we fetched the iPad in and we recorded some personal messages, sent them down to you, and you very kindly responded. And uh, come September, the big, big red wagon drove onto site. And we kept sitting, we were sitting in a McDonald's when we did ours. We were just going yeah. out for lunch, and, and it come, and you, I think, however you'd sent it to us, it come through, and, and we just put the, the thing up, and we went, yeah, yeah. we've got to go. Um, <laughs> and as it unfolded, it, it meant that you became the, the inaugural uh, visit. We've done a few since. We've been to, been to Nottingham College, which we thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, we were linked up with the college when we were down in Hemel Hempstead. And I don't want to break your heart too much, but, Ian, you're no longer the fastest college lecturer at the EFIX Apprentice Hall in the country. Uh, that, that, that's it then. That's just not good enough. Just, just not good enough. I think what we're going to do though is we're going to start having like the the London Marathon. We're going to have some novelty ones. We've now got the fastest gentleman in a waistcoat. Boyd done it, and he was the quickest person. He's the only person to wear a waistcoat, but he's the quickest person to do it. And I think you could come along, maybe dressed as Elvis. The fastest person in an Elvis outfit. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. It just so happens in the wardrobe upstairs, I have an Elvis outfit. I know because I keep seeing the picture. It just cracks me up every time he comes on. Big, big collars are up and all. Is, was that just that happened to be? Oh, I was just about to say, are you? No, okay. So it just happened to have the outfit. So, yeah. so yeah, I, I think you've come along to the Lincoln one where you didn't do the wall because, yeah. of course, you resting on your laurels. You were the fastest yeah, college lecturer at the time. At the time I was the fastest instructor in the UK. So. I, I, yeah. No point shaving any time off. Yeah. So you got a PB, so you got to beat that now. Um, what was ironic about the one down in Hemel Hempstead was, I think the guy who did it, and I can't remember his name, he was more the established college lecturer who'd been there for years, and he had his new lad who was doing a lot of workshop stuff, but straight off the tool was still working. That lad had two attempts and still didn't get near his time. And I mean, oh, the pride on his face. It looked, he was the, the lecturer was trying not to go, well, you can't teach your old dogs new tricks and I'm brilliant and all the rest of it. And the young lad's like, oh, they didn't get there. So, which was um, a, a shame for him, but uh, brilliant fun. We also have the apprentices, the, the fastest apprentice on the night, one lad, one, some material test equipment and all sorts yeah. of stuff. So, so yeah, trying to give back. That college got a lot of free stuff at the actual event as well. Um, which was really nice as well. When we were up there um, with you, uh, we won't suggest whether it's male or female because I think it's best to keep it private, but there was an Apprentice of the Year competition winner. Have they had their prize yet from Mega and stuff? Not yet. No, um, we've actually had a visit from Mega recently and uh, we've got something penciled in with him, but the, the announcement and presentation is yet to come. Oh, right. Okay. So good job we didn't say whether it's male or female. You've got many female learners. You've got one. If I said, oh, it was a female, they'd be like, no. <laughs> You got, you got three or four, three, three or four female learners. We had three in the second year, so right, that, okay. And there's a there's one in the first year, okay. This this year as well, okay. And looking at obviously teaching from home and all the rest of it, you've obviously you've gone through that um, part of your, your your process. Your house is also full of other people that are effectively key yes. workers. You're still providing education for yours. Can you can you elaborate maybe on your family well, members? It's, it's battle of the bandwidth here at the moment. My son's upstairs in his bedroom. He works for the local authority, so he's he's working from home. If if, if you ring about your bin not being emptied, you'll get my son on the phone. <laughs> my, my wife, she she's out. She's at work at the moment. She she's a chef. She works wow. at a hospital, and she's feeding on right. the NHS workers as we speak today. Okay, is that taking up a lot of it? Is she constantly at work or has she got a normal working pattern? Well, as I mentioned off camera before, uh, last week she had a 10-day stretch. 
So <laughs> in a week. <laughs> in a week, yeah. Ten, ten days without a day off. Uh, she wow. should have had a couple of days off, and they called her in on the second of the days off. Um, what they're trying to do is ensure that every member of staff gets at least one decent meal a day. Okay. Well, <laughs> God forbid I just do yeah, one decent meal. So. Yeah. So okay. that's her uh, doing that. And then, of course, I've got my not-so-young daughter now, who's a third-year university student, nursing student. All right. She was due to graduate this year. She's uh, actually one of the third year students that's put herself forward to actually go in and work on the front line. Oh, wow. So is that imminent? She's just waiting to be told when and where now. She's filled all her paperwork in and they've had a completing online distance learning stuff and making sure she's got everything done. Mm. Um, she's waiting on the phone call. Oh, wow. Well, I imagine that's quite a pressured moment for dad, isn't it? To, to think pride that obviously it, she's a, a nurse. It's, uh, well, very, we're very, very proud of her. But unfortunately, I can identify very much with the parents of the youngsters that went to war back in back in the day. Yeah. You know, it, it's a mixture of pride and worry about her welfare as well. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm sure that, that anyone who's watching this who's got to this point of the, the ramble will say thank you to your wife for what she's doing. And obviously the extra hours she's putting in order to feed our great staff over there in the NHS. And then massive thanks for your daughter to cut effectively her course slightly shorter and obviously go straight in on the front line. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, they've, uh, it, it's their third year, so due to graduate in September, but of course that's all off now. And uh, so no graduation yeah. then. I'm assuming that they'll do something, but at the moment graduation's out the window. They're uh, they're off to work. They're off on the. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. I, I I don't know as as a father how I'd feel on that one. That would be yeah, yeah it's so, really difficult. Very very proud of her because you know, her year. Um, they were the first year after the bursary was stopped and of course for the three years they've been, they've been self-funding uh, and the bursary is back this September so their year have missed out on the bursary full stop as well so they've hmm. self through this and they're the ones that are going to go in and they're the ones that are going yeah that yeah. doesn't seem very fair does it no they, they've literally as I say they, they've work weekend as healthcare assistants and stuff like that my daughter has she worked every hour she could at McDonald's before she started university and saved every penny right. to fund yeah. itself through. So uh, it's nice to see the bursary back in September for the next year's intake, but this particular year group missed out on the lot. Yeah, time to pause and reflect there, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a, so obviously the, 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 we had a little story off camera, so we'll probably try and mesh it in here nicely. If she got to perhaps a local uh, NHS hospital, Obviously, there's all those concerns about the amount of PPE available, yeah. etc. Can you tell us a story about that links into British Steel? Well, we, we're very, very fortunate, I think, in Scunthorpe. Um, I don't think it's any secret. You, you've got to be living under a rock to not hear that British Steel last year went into receivership. Yeah. Very recently, it was taken over uh, by a, a Chinese company. They've, they've taken over. They've come in with big ideas and big investment. But the minute we had the outbreak... The owners took it upon themselves to send the company jet over with a large quantity of PPE, not only for the works, but to share with the local hospital as well. So they have supplied Scunthorpe General Hospital with with the, a share of something like a million pounds worth of PPE. Wow. So, wow. Excellent on their part. Is that well advertised up your way? Because obviously it never no, got down to us. No, they, they're not, they don't seem to be seeking praise for all of this they've just done that as a community spirited event wow well so not only did they say probably the apprentices jobs that you're currently working with and future apprentices yeah. for the british steel plant is going to stay british steel they're going to keep the name i think i believe it's staying as british steel uh it, it's now owned um I don't, I don't think any of us can actually pronounce it properly yet it's the jingye group <laughs> Okay, British Steel. Okay, yeah. So uh, I think we're keeping the British Steel name, and, and of course our training centre, uh, according to the information they put out at Takeover, will continue to be run by the local college on behalf of British Steel. All right. Okay. Which secures your jobs effectively. It's nice to think so. Yeah. Um, and obviously, it's the wrong time of year. We'd normally be advertising for new apprentices for them now, and the apprenticeship intakes. So we're not quite sure how that's going to go forward yet. So, well, let's hope they maybe fill it up with maybe some of your quality full-time learners, give them an opportunity. Yeah, maybe yeah. that would be nice, well, wouldn't it? 
we've we've had the FE students this year while the company's been in receivership at the British Steel Training Centre. So uh, okay. there's a first year cohort up at the main site as well. So there's there's quite a few to go at. Um, Is there some some that you think have reached the standards? Because not all do. We we've got one or two that this year that really really have exceeded you know be above and beyond. So we'll make really really good tradespeople. Okay, well, so maybe at the end of this, of which it looks like you personally, your household of making the, the biggest contribution out of all, you've obviously got your wife doing a bit, your daughter's going in on the front line, and your, your company that you're connected to are providing the NHS with PPE. So, well, hats off Ian Clark for all, all of those amazing efforts. I've also got to it's say... It's nice uh, to be associated with them. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And, I'll, and, and I'd agree. It's nice to be associated with you because you are the only other person other than me and Joe to make a, a contribution to the eFix Apprentice Hub with your own section. Oh, there's, uh, uh, can, I, can I have well, it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, people watching won't realise the joke there, but I've been promising to post this for months. <laughs> it's got the 16th edition questions on it, isn't it? <laughs> Well, actually, there's some prep work there for Amendment 2 of the 18th edition. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, thanks for that. But, yeah, but no. I've spent quite a bit of time, um, literally from day one of the launch of the 18th edition, I've been delivering it. Over 500 successful learners have passed through courses with me and uh, quite pleased to be able to, to share my insights there. There's some stuff on there for you, some, some popular exam regular questions and stuff on there and one or two exam tips and stuff to send for you. Thank you. You're, you're, and again, I can't reiterate anyone who's prepared to give their time, obviously their material. People tend to like to keep their own material. It's mine. It's mine. <clears throat> I, I've got a great understanding that if you like yourself, you make videos for your students or the rest of it, you're prepared to give your time up for everyone. You're prepared to give your material up for everyone. It just helps everyone. Yeah. It? It's, it's not that keeping secret stuff. And I'd like to think maybe as we come out of this, um, that other, other colleges have maybe made better connections. So, They've actually started now perhaps sharing resources amongst um, themselves and, and not just saying, well, I've got this really good distance learning package. Well, the college up the road, wouldn't it be just a nice email to, to hand it over? So, yeah. So massive thanks. There are some moves afoot. I see one or two of the uh, the lecturers forums and sort of su suggesting a bit more collaboration. So I'm I'm, I'm very well, you saw, you, you came to me one time, I think, and you said, oh, the only thing I haven't got is a 5357 practical book. And I went, I put it on two weeks ago or something, didn't I? Yeah. Sitting down near the Express. Did you have a look at that? And, uh, well, I, I sent you some pictures if you're you did. Um, I do. My students for, actually using it. The next day, very proud of that. I was <laughs> I put that one on my Instagram page. I was like, that. that's why I did yeah. it. And other people will say, well, hang on a minute, that one of them books was like 160, 50 pages long or whatever it was. It took me 18 years to get it to that standard. Yeah. But what, why you keep it on my memory stick when you know a good bloke like yourself doesn't have to do that? You can spend more time concentrating on something else. It came in very useful. It made life a lot easier. I didn't have to to create worksheets and stuff. We downloaded yours. We went through it, and then we was able to go down in the workshop and play with some tools and stuff. Yeah, which is what it's all about. Work through it. It's good. And I think I've got 20 on there now, but your your 18th edition section's got your own name in it. You own that space. And I thank you for that on the Efix Apprentice. Of, you're a good man. Well, I have a couple more practice papers on here to come for you as well. So. OK, I, I do thin them out, though. I don't I don't give all your gold away. I do, I do look at it and think, <laughs> well, we'll give everything away. We're not we're not yeah. training people to pass exams. We're um, using it as that final revision tool. So that's really good. And, you know, we, we talked about it off camera about books as well, didn't we? The, the, the classic yes. case, isn't it, of people not always always reading the books we want them to read. Well, it's it's funny. You put a video out the other day about people buying books and you were saying, if you're not going to read it, don't buy it. And I no. thought, do you know, that absolutely is me. And, and today I've actually had a bit of a clear out. I've had a, I've had a look through all my books and I'm notorious for buying books. I've got books on all sorts of subjects that I thought that might I might read that. But one of the things on your video, you said you was missing a book. Well, it just oh, so I've yeah. got three copies, so I'll get that in the post to you as well. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I love that book. I think yeah. that book's I, really I think it's clever. an excellent book. Uh, it's it's good for the students, and, and it's it, it's sort of halfway house be, between you know, what the on-site guide tries to explain. It, it's very good for the for the students to work from. And I think it's actually cheaper as well, isn't it? And, uh, yeah, I don't think there's a lot in it. I think, is it 21 quid? Something like that? Some, I think. Something like that. Yeah, and 
And like I said before, I said what I like about it is that you'll have the Ohm's law calculation. You'll have how to wire two-way and two-way and intermediate switching. And then you will have easier to understand of the on-site guide or reg section. Yeah. And it's a lovely but I've met, I think I think I've met the author of it um, uh, uh, an event one time. Really nice guy as well. So, yeah, yeah really, really well, good book. I, I did all of the shows last year. So every time I got to talk to somebody, I was scrounging stuff as well. So I managed to amass three copies of that. So I'll send you a copy down. <laughs> you're, again, you're a very kind man. Yeah. And uh, if that can be used to obviously produce some more material for the eFix Apprentice Hub, that's what it'll be used for. So that, that's really yeah. good. So dare I ask how long you've been teaching? Because you've not been teaching quite as long as I thought you had, have you? No, no, no. Relatively new. Uh, three years now. Uh, actually working for a college i've been in roles where i've been expected to do staff training and stuff in the past but to ac- actually doing this on on the coal face with, with live real students since 2017 so well, quite you, new you, really. but you definitely got a passion for it and that comes through every time i obviously met you and spoke to you it, do you see yourself continuing on is this going to see you through to the end of those bitter well, days as, as a toddler in primary school when they went around and said, what do you want to do when you grow up? I said, I wanted to be an electrician. Oh, right, okay. After about six months of that primary school teacher, that changed to, I wanted to be a teacher. All oh, right, done both. So good old Mrs. Taylor back at primary school, <laughs> I managed to be an electrician and now I'm, I'm trying my best at the other. Oh, because whenever people have asked me loads of times, are you a, a lecturer? Are you a tutor? Are you a teacher? And my answer, I'm an electrician. I just yeah. that's what I am. I'm am an electrician. But now, for a while, for those 19 years, I've stopped now. But I, yeah, I, I taught for those for that period of time. So i will still tell everyone, unless they've just bought a new house, and then I say I'm a teacher because <laughs> nobody asks a teacher to do anything, do they? Well, uh, what well, do you do for a living? I teach. I've, I've, I've just literally in in the last month, I've I've just finally left the NICEIC as a member. Right. Okay. Were you still doing uh, bits then? Yeah. Well, I kept my membership going. Uh, I think it was my comfort blanket just in case. <laughs> but I finally bit the bullet and, and severed ties this year because, you know, paying the membership fee and everything else just for the sake of the odd job here and there wasn't really worth it. Oh, okay. So well, you're, you're all in now then? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> yeah, no no running away from it now. So let's, let's just summarise it. And I'd just like to say again, thank you. These are my memories. So I do these electoral rambles. So when I eventually hopefully get an opportunity to stop and I can look back through the catalogue of the lovely people I've met along the way and the ones I've had a lovely chat with, and you're definitely Ian in that category of the great people that I've met on this journey. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's just my way of summarising, you know, my, my time obviously in the electrical industry. However, I think today we really need to be thanking you and your family for all the wonderful things you're doing with your distance learning, with your wife working in the catering department at the NHS and your daughter introducing herself to the front line through choice. So this time in, I'd like to say a massive thanks to you and your family for this electoral ramble. It's, it's nice to be part of that big organisation that's doing something. <sighs> and some. Yeah, you're a brave man, as we said earlier. So uh, can we do it in the time? Uh, we have a slight delay here, I would imagine, on Skype. So it's it. Are we going to try and <laughs> going to try? And, yeah. One's got to go earlier than the other, so we're going to try and end it in that time on a tradition. I'd like to say thank you to Ian Clark yep. for being my first Skype electrical ramble. There'll be some more of these, hopefully, with other key people up and down the country that are influencing our industry. So uh, seeing them, yeah. So uh, we're just, uh, I'm lining them up, but you were first. So here we go. So me and Ian would like to say we, we hope, hope this, this, video. this video has been <laughs> some help. <laughs> Good man. <laughs>